consolation. By no stretch of imagination, you can say Gandhi was casteist. Because he was deadly against untouchability. And uh, how do you actually practice ism, like casteism? You only practice it through your day-to-day practices. And I don't want to repeat uh, what defines casteism, discrimination, repulsion, exclusion, avoidance, all that is there. But one of the most important things to really define caste is to really uh, is to take into consideration the notion of body and space. Caste is codified into your body. And I don't have to go to Purush Sutta. And once caste is actually grafted onto your body, very sensitive body, you carry on untouchability with the help of uh, your, your body. Body as mediated body, body. through this Purush Sutta, fourfold, uh, Brahmin Sudra, 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 uh, yeah, Sudra. Now, therefore, there is an enchantment with body. Body is enchanted through this grafting. When you are yeah, actually, hello. you are already constructed this body through this four. For one now, now. Now. If you ask this question to Gandhiji, yeah, Gandhiji would say, I don't carry these four things on my body. Yeah, Gandhiji's body is most disenchanted body. Yeah, yeah. body. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you can think about Gandhiji's body differently. The Brahmacharya, and he is actually one serious person who is crucifying the flesh. Flesh is the problem that actually imprisons your soul. And Vikupai says, you know, moral surgery of this heart. That is so important. And you have to go for the moral surgery of heart only through crucifying your flesh. Gandhiji does it all through his life. But I'm not talking about that crucifixion of flesh. I'm talking about whether Gandhi's body is available for any kind of fruitful danger. Actually, he's disenchanting his body. And I was told, and you look at his bare body, completely bare body, do you find any caste marker on his body? I don't find any marker on his body. There's no vibhuti, there's nothing. There is no holy bed as Max Weber would call. Actually, he refuses to wear. And he is when he's, he's outcast by his members of the community for his uh, taking travel abroad, he doesn't seek re-entry into the caste system. I mean, in a way, he is actually discarding all the caste markers on his body. So, in terms of the space on the body, Gandhiji doesn't really uh, make any space for untouchability. Therefore, you cannot really uh, Say Gandhiji was casteist. This is the first submission to your consideration. Second consideration to your submission is about uh, the uh, Gandhiji actually defied the logic, intellectual logic through which you define, you legitimize casteism and varnasam system or untouchability practices. Only through shastras you can do it and repeat it. And, and again, the, you find that Gandhi is taking into his own command, the epistemic, the, the, the power of interpreting Shastras, therefore denying the Pandits their own traditional authority to interpret, interpret Varnas. And therefore, the, the point that one has to make here is that if you think that you are taking fight with the Panditjis, you are in a way making a very strong case against casteism. Because legislating on caste or varna or regulating caste and sata is the exclusive intellectual right of certain community. And Gandhi is actually defying him, therefore, how can you call him caste? Actually, he actually is in a way uh, challenging caste. He may not be radically anti caste as Fule and Ambedkar were. But he certainly is in that tradition where caste is being challenged through this very, very discursive uh, move, as one can say. So this is the second point, I would say, uh, uh, which would uh, which, which, which not really uh, make Gandhi as caste. The third point I would like to make is about uh, uh, that why Gandhi couldn't be condemned as caste is because all his life, he was so consistent against untouchability. He was very strict that people shouldn't follow. I mean, in his personal life and other life, others' life, 
that you should never follow untouchability. And if you think untouchability is one important way of yes, defining caste, Gandhiji was actually to find that logic of untouchability. And then you can find uh, uh, in Gandhiji several, on several occasions that untouchability has no place in his own, own, own framework. And he is one person who is taking regular social risk of actually annoying those who are casteists. He is actually taking fight into the mainstream and fighting out the issue of casteism. And he had to run a great grave social, intellectual and physical risk. And then Bhikkhu Bhai, you mentioned in your earlier, uh, your, 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 your longer piece in traditional reform and colonialism. Who was harassing him? Were the untouchables harassing him? Or Dalit harassing him? No, they were not harassing him. The most people who troubled him, harassed him, inflicted filthy language at him was where the upper caste orthodox people. And so much so that he was actually he was being attacked in Pune in 1934 for the question that for the question of untouchability. And uh, to share with you, Ambedkar had to come to his defense in 1934 in Mumbai. And he condemned along with us why it was wrong on the part of the orthodox people to really harass Gandhiji in 1934 in Pune. So there are several scholars who have made this point of really uh, making Gandhi as not casteist. I don't know why people make him Only two minutes only. I'll take one minute only. Uh, the last point I would like to uh, make uh, on this occasion is uh, the historical question. And the question that Vikubai in the morning session raised is politicizing the historical question. Now I'm arguing out, I made this point in the, in the Sabarmati Ashram lecture, the first lecture I gave on 26th November in, in, in Ashram. Okay. That both Gandhi and Ambedkar were actually, were the part of this historical question which, called, which is called untouchability. They were actually framing this question, debating this question, wanted to transcend this question for the future generation. If this is the vision of Gandhi and Ambedkar, how can you really reduce him to this kind of a very, very narrow, prejudiced uh, and, and actually highly intellectually, politically, morally problematic position? So I will stop here. Friends, I must begin with the confession that I have never found myself uh, so diffident and so nervous and so uncertain about uh, how to pitch and where to pitch this presentation. Uh, the, the difficulty and the uncertainty, these arise from uh, a very simple fact. If this question has been raised, or these questions have been raised, was Gandhi casteist, racist, and pro big business or pro capital, then surely people as intelligent as I am, people more intelligent than I, have seen Gandhi as a casteist, as a racist, and as pro business, pro capital. And that being the case, what possible ground can I have from which to make my presentation before you and hope to carry conviction with you? Now, when I was asked to come here and speak on this, I remember a book I read long ago by B. R. Nanda, uh, Gandhi's Critics. The book came out in 1985. And I want to read before you a certain passage which uh, Diyananda quotes in this book. This is Washington Post, 1983. And what of his pacifism, the quality that supposedly makes him a man for our time? Gandhi was singularly bellicose until the age of 50. Not only was he eager to kill off the Zulus, but also the Boers and all 
Britain's world war enemies, unquote. Now, if intelligent people can bring themselves to be think that this is the kind of person Gandhi was, at least till he was 50, are there factual grounds for making this statement? Or there is something else apart from factual grounds? And this brings me to raise the question of the importance of facts in history. Gandhi's life is an open book from 1985 when, and, and also incidentally I may tell you that in this book, B. Arnandas Gandhi, Gandhi's critics, there is nothing by way, there was no new criticism since 1985 has been leveled against Gandhi. So it's the same thing being repeated over and over again except for the fact that there is a kind of, I mean, there is greater organization of this kind of a, a, a critical Gandhi corpus. And uh, if, if you have seen uh, Ghulam, Javed, and uh, Ashish, sorry, Arvind Desai's book, you know, the kind of portrayal that we have of Gandhi in this. And when I was reading Kulam in Javed's book, earlier book, which he wrote with uh, Surendra Bhan, and there is a very, very uh, balanced portrayal of Gandhi. And I started reading this book, I was looking for some additional evidence or some additional argument that Kulam Javed may have come up with regard to Gandhi. There's nothing new. And the surprising thing is that Gulam Javed in this book never mentions his earlier position. So, so, so I keep asking myself, how is it that this man, 20 years ago or maybe 10 years ago, was taking this position with regard to Gandhi, and now 10 years later, he's become such a confirmed critic of Gandhi. So that being the case, is there any possibility of my being able to tell you like Gopal has valiantly attempted to show that Gandhi was not a racist, that Gandhi was not a racist, that Gandhi did not believe in killing, countenance the killing of the Zulus and the Poles. Is there any way I can This being the case, I would make a request to you. Don't trust a word of what Gopal's reflexivity. It is possible that you will come to a conclusion which will be more like what Gopal tried to present before you. He talked only about Gandhi's casteism or supposed casteism, and the same would be true with regard to the other two charges that Gandhi was a racist, Gandhi was a racist and pro business. I will end with just two or three quotations. I am happy that the previous session was primarily in Hindi and what I have to present before you are certain quotations from Gandhi's um, Prarthana Pravacham during his last months. Gandhi, when the decision to partition the country was accepted by the Congress behind his back. Bhikubai, in an earlier session, reminded us of that important fact. Gandhi said, Ab jab ye faisla ho gaya hai, to sabse achha hoga ki hum isko maan le. Yehi sab ke hit mein. Prabhuot, in that session said, and Gandhi accepted the decision. I think that's only half true that Gandhi accepted the decision. Gandhi only accepted the decision in the hope to be able to undo that decision. And he said, Ab batware ka faisla to ho hi gaya hai, ab hamara farz ye banta hai ki hum aisa karein 
कि ये भूगोल का तो बंटवारा हो दिलों का बंटवारा न होने पाए और अगर हम दिलों के बंटवारे को रोक लेंगे तो एक दिन ऐसा आएगा कि ये बंटवारा बेमाने हो जाएगा दिस इज द काइंड ऑफ पर्सन गांधी इज एंड देन ही वेंट ऑन टू से सेम कॉन्टेक्ट और लोग मुझसे कहते हैं कि अब क्यों नहीं करते अमर अनशन मर जाओ ना तो रोक दो विभाजन इसे अगर मैंने कोशिश की तो जो विभाजन ऊपर हो रहा है वो अगर रोक दिया गया तो ये के दिलों में घर कर कि क्या मैं आज कांग्रेस का बागी बन जाऊं मैं कांग्रेस का बागी उस दिन बनूंगा जिस दिन मैं देख लूंगा कि ये पूंजी पतियों की संस्था हो गई लंबी कहानी है कि तीस जनवरी को वो फरवरी में एक मीटिंग करने जा रहे थे वर्धा में जो वो नहीं कर पाए और उस मीटिंग में जो होता वो पूंजी और पूंजी पतियों के पक्ष का भारत न बनता वो दूसरा भारत बनता ये दो रेसिज्म का क्या अगर किसी को यकीन हो ही जाए तो आप लोग मेरी बस इतनी विनती मान लें कि गांधी को खुद पढ़ें और गांधी को पढ़ते पढ़ते अपने को भी देखते रहें धन्यवाद शुक्रिया थैंक यू सो मच इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट एक्ट टू फॉलो आफ्टर टू सच सीरियर कॉलिग्स मेक थ्री ब्रीफ पॉइंट्स Uh, firstly that these allegations of racism we should take as an opportunity an opportunity for critical thinking because if there is anything if there is one undisputed uh, heritage that is worth celebrating with many things we can quarrel about gandhi on details of what he said what he did what it means today but the one thing that we cannot dispute is his respect for critical thinking and by that let's take the example of the statue being removed in ghana as a as a test case for this so uh, of course i think we will all agree that it doesn't matter how many statues of gandhi you remove okay that will not in any way because the number of statues that we have added have not actually is not what keeps the power of his ideas or his ideals and what he represents to so many people in the world so the removal of statues will not be a negative but why that incident is important is that we do need to reach out and find out what is bothering the people what is the concern what is the anxiety that has caused them to uh, come to this conclusion to the point where even the statue of gandhi is deemed to be offensive and what i am seeing in that i could be wrong my information about what is exactly is happening in ghana is very limited to uh, pretty much okay. third hand reports that we are reading uh, over the internet but what i sense is happening is a search for the pure hero so it's very ironic the very people who want to in a sense pull him off the pedestal of mahatma are actually demanding a pure hero and this is very worrisome because all quests for purity in both in personal life and public life are always dangerous because people who hanker for this kind of purity are uncomfortable with uncertainty they are uncomfortable with ambiguity they are uncomfortable with the fact that all of us at all times are in the process of making ourselves we are all on moral journeys in which at any moment in time if you catch us in our you know whether it's our life trajectory or our intellectual <coughs> trajectory we will be found inadequate right in some way or the other so to me that's the most worrisome thing because you will find that there is a link between these these fears of ambiguity and uncertainty and fundamentalism of various kinds that we are seeing becoming very powerful very prolific across the world so that's the main thing that and i would 
say that this is true for the casteism issue inside India also. It's wonderful and it is absolutely correct that we should have a very, very strong line on abolition of caste in India today in the 21st century. But that does not mean that we should completely condemn as unsavable and as unredeemable those yeah. people who are not able to catch up with the 21st century as fast as we would like them to. I don't know how many of you have followed this uh, thing in the US election campaign that Hillary Clinton used the word deplorables to describe Trump's supporters. And now many analysts are telling us that that description may have actually tilted more people in Trump's favor. So the critical thing that I have learned from my little bit of experience on the ground and from many friends who are not themselves Dalits, but who have tried and have worked very closely with the Dalit movement, uh, their key insight is that how can we create a more convincing narrative to show that there are large segments, or let me not call them segments, there is a powerful uh, feeling among the upper and the middle castes of repentance, which doesn't actually come to the surface when you challenge it frontally. Now this is a paradox, but it is there and we have to find institutional and social and cultural ways of bringing that more and more to the surface because the fundamental transformative responsibility is with the erstwhile so-called upper castes and middle castes. Uh, and I close by answering the question on capitalism, which actually currently is the one that interests me the most personally because I have just completed an essay this year on trusteeship. And the sequence is really quite uh, simple. Number one, and this is not just Gandhiji's feeling, this is a historical fact that commerce and capitalism should not be confused with each other. Bazaars are a very ancient mechanism of human society. Capitalism is a very new thing. Capitalism is not more than about 250, maximum 300 years old. And what Gandhiji understood is that from the time that our ancestors stopped being hunters and gatherers, from the time, which is what, some 8,000 years ago or 10,000 years ago, that human beings started settling in one place and doing settled agriculture and, you know, creating some surpluses. Commerce has been there across all these ancient civilizations. India, China and the uh, Middle East are actually the only three civilizational zones in which this culture of commerce remained uninterrupted. And so this bizarre form that is currently called the market, which is also capitalism, is actually a modern invention in Western Europe. That Gandhiji is completely and unequivocally opposed to. Why? Because he argues the entrepreneurial skill, the ability to take men, people, matter, materials, money, and churn materials and goods and services out of it, it is a rare skill. All of us cannot be entrepreneurs. Okay, just the thought of reading a balance sheet can give me, you know, palpitations. I am sure many people are like that. So he says, because it's a rare <coughs> skill, everybody doesn't have it. Whoever has the entrepreneurial ability, who has that banya mind, that business ability, must use it with a spirit of, spirit of trusteeship. So first of all, you have to be a trustee of that skill. And then you have to be a trustee to the wealth that you generate through that skill. So in a sense, even that skill is not really your own. It is there in you for the larger good. Now in Gandhi's time, this was treated as a very utopian thing to do. It was dismissed. He was ridiculed by the leftists. Uh, and, and, and certainly by the also, that is right wing meaning the economic capitalist right wing. 
But the fact is that what he said has proven to be true. And his central prediction was, his, on this issue his main prediction was that both capitalism and communism will eventually fail. And only a spirit of trusteeship will save, will, will nurture human society and now as we know it is only that which will save the planet. Because I'll just close by saying that exactly what Gandhiji predicted has come true, that to live like the industrial West is living, and this is in the 40s he was saying, we will need four planets. And that is already true now. Climate change is the civilizational burden created by capitalism. And I'll close here. Well, I'm sure you will agree I couldn't have had more disciplined speakers. Hardly anyone exceeded nine and a half minutes. So thank you all. I have a lot of people who are not going to I have I Gopal Guru, Samji Shake Shake Gujarati, and Maras, Maras, and I think Professor Thorogun is Samji Shake 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 and three you can Muribad Angi Gandhi in Osho Abibai. Muribad is not favored the pro business at the Pontilla. The name of the name of the the name of the name of the name of the name of the he became Mahatma after years and years of hard struggle and internal discipline. And a Mohandas Mahatma Thai Che, a Aki Prakriyama Avar Mavar Emnaji Purvagraho Je Che, a Ek Pachi Ek Purvagraho Ni Bhar Nakare Che. He became Mahatma because he was able to rise above his prejudices one after the other. Koi Pan Te Vagatna Bharati Adi Mahatma, Kadi Jare South Africa Jai Che, there is any Kari Prajapi and Emma Puru, it lacks a gay Pijakuna Hoy. K Prajap, it will be the Ushia Nati, A Prajap, Ramitakari Judice, Tiani Hierarchy, Doria, Bella, Bachiama, 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 and have successfully. Adar Thunit Anuma Gandhi Jai Che. Teva Kate Aaj Adna Purva Guru Gandhi Purta Che. Oguri Sana Aach Ma Gandhi Ji Kye Che Ke different races must co-mingle and produce a new civilization. Sharuva Atma Ji Amna Ji Purva Guru Gandhi Ji Dere Dere Tukta Jai Che Amna Kya Lava Che Ke Common Humanity Aapne Bada Ne Bandhe Che Ye Sutra Thi Aapne Bandhai La Che Amna Oguri Sana Aach Ma Amna so what I'm saying is he carried with him this bundle of prejudices and it took him a little while but by 1908 he had begun to talk about the co-mingling of different races. a gold mine a pneumonic plague. A plague man, Moda Bagna Manasuk, Tiana Africa, Indian Sata, and Gandhi Ji and Keva Mayu, the way the Indian Sanaji Kara Manas, who said, Mother Matak in Karo, and then the Mother Dapi. It was named Jare Zulu or Vakati Emine, a co Zulu rebellion Jaratho, that Indian ambulance call and no go to the Makara Manas when I was not a little. But it's something interesting for some time, say, Yerbada Jail Nyanda. It's a wonderful experience that he had. 
in the Arab Dajjal, when there is a Somali who is in prison warden, in Somali to Manas, Kano Manu, prison warden. Gandhiji room in a cell by Betha and Pilai Papo Pari, can get a Michi Kaduto. Michi Kadu, somebody in a Yedam Dorta, Aveche, Queen Kapanda Thiki Manas Aveche, but two Pelanuja, Jerzich, Chusi Lesh in a Fakeche, Chusi in a Fakeche, and a Pachi Jer Pilla Manas and Sage from Fabi. There Gandhiji book to Jaiche, and the Pilo Manas and a thank you care is Sabado Sudi Roka Mota. Ah, Gandhi. That when a scorpion stung this man, the black Somali, Gandhi rushed out of his cell, sucked all the poison out, and only left after the man felt relieved, and not long enough to hear the word thank you from him. Now, but she is America man, this Karamana Sushi, he pretend Miss Ahanubuti, the Abadu Jota and Mukma, who only saw the Chirk art Pachi, he is at Nadi Burundi who am Namaji Ata, ever he do that. Caste and gay Emma Shubicharo. Caste Nitron Char Lakshanetau. There are four characteristics to the caste. Tell you a straight occupational differentiation. Jerry Caste Udando. Biju. Hereditary occupation. The name the donor of the day than the Matanama Dagawa. Triju exclusivity. Kitamaru Kawa knows like the Mudutamari under his home. And it's also hierarchy. Amu caste Mudi, Amu caste. These are the four features of the caste. Their occupational differentiation, hereditary occupation, exclusivity in terms of interdining and intermarriage, and hierarchy. A charma gandhi ne kori sabe baadho hoto. Pellu je che, occupational differentiation, any favor ma gandhi ji ata. Hereditary occupation, any favor ma gandhi ji ata. He was in favor of the first two. And the law of karma ke che ke bhai, maara karma je che, it is at karma ke lai ne at jatna bhao padho chhe. Triju exclusivi che ni saame sarwa atna kya da daan pe jane khao ude khao hai, force kam karo chhe ke ne biji kaas na maana chhe ude khao. Hierarchy ni saame apne pehle thi maan do do. Itle caste upar no emno attack je che, ek pa che, ek pa che, tamak ke aam te jai chhe. First he attacks the hierarchy. Kalo all are equal, in the caste, Gati Prathaya Nima Chai Varna Vat Prathaya Nima Chai Varna Vat Prathaya Nima Chai Pachi Dheere Dheere Aajai Exclusivity Chai Eni Sama Tum 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 Pachi Aave Chai Hereditary Occupation Aabet Kare Kao Tum 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 समझ ता जाए छे जेम तेम समझ ता जाए छे तेम तेम एमने विचारो बदला ता जाए छे एने प्रोग्रेसिव एटीट्यूड एमने वाप तो जाए छे कई कम से सोशल कंजर्वेटिव खरा ये रिमेन द सोशल कंजर्वेटिव इन द स्मॉल वे एंड कास्ट इन डाउट ना तो खास पर धीरे धीरे एमा थी ये मुक्त तो ता जाए छे संपूर्ण अपने नहीं पर 70 के 80% तो खरा अने जे रणनीति मैंने कहू तेम छलो सवाल प्रो क्रिएशनस तो थ्री बोल Pro business man Gandhi ji na vicharo, to say la ga. Koi property no kao ka maari property chhe. Kai rite maari property chhe. Kibhi me ene maate mehnat kari chhe maate. Itli shun. Me mehnat kari chhe lea property maari kem thai. Bhi maari chhe shakti ho chhe, maari shakti ho niye pehla ash chhe. Pala ho chhe. Maari shakti kya thai abhi? Maari intelligence, maari vanata, maari buddhi. ये तो मारा वार्षा माध्यम मरीज़ है मारा पेरेंट्स का सिर्फ मरीज़ है अरे ये बुद्धि हो जो मैं पोते मारा प्रयत्न थी ना कर दी भाई तो बस ये बुद्धि मारी क्यों नहीं दिखाई शिकाय मारी ये ऐसा मार के मारा भाग चें तो मारी ये ऐसा मार नहीं पसंद सी बात है मारी मारी इतने मारी बस इतने शक्ति हो चें ये तो that means that I have generated it. I have generated these capacities. I inherited them. And all them for direct was to the Madhya Pradesh property work. The Madhya Pradesh work. The school level work. Our Shastra ma char jatna dhanu ka varse rushi dhan, pitru dhan. Kya badai? Tamne je jat jatna upkar karine. Aaj sidhu sidhu lagya. To ene line aam ye vastu ko tamne na trusty cho. Ne wo bhiok samaj na faida na ke thalu jee. समाज इल्ले पास हुई एब्स्ट्रैक्शन नहीं, बीजा बदा मानसो, बीजा बदा मानसो मारते हैं हमारे दोस्त लोगों को, 
આજે સિદ્ધાંત હોય તો કેપિટલિઝમ આવી ગયા કેપિટલિઝમ હોય જ ના શકે કારણ કે કેપિટલિઝમ ઇઝ આઈ મીન એક્સક્લુઝિવ ઓન ધ રોડ બાય ગાંધીજી